Hello again. I'm Dr. Stephen Davidson, the Sexual Integrity Coach located in Wilton Manors, Florida. Thank you for watching another episode of Adult Sex Education. A subscriber recently messaged me saying that he is aware that patients sometimes fall in love with their therapist. He asked if it's ever happened to me, especially since I spend so much time talking with my patients about sex. This is a sensitive subject and one that is very important. The command to never enter into a sexual or romantic relationship with a patient is made clear very early in a young therapist training, and it is repeated many times throughout our careers in clinical supervision, required continuing education classes, and also in our professional codes of ethics. Most therapists are naturally caring and compassionate individuals, and this is one of the traits that motivates them to pursue a career in a helping profession. In training, therapists learn how to use that care and compassion to effectively help clients navigate life's challenges. This also includes being mindful of the therapist's own personal issues, how to set boundaries for the therapist and the patient, and how to minimize legal or ethical violations that could potentially be harmful for all parties involved. The patient-therapist relationship is one of the most emotionally intimate relationships some patients ever have. People will share things with their therapist that they might not feel safe sharing with their pastor, their attorney, their physician, or even their own family. For those of us who specialize in sex therapy, people come to us to discuss their most personal sexual thoughts and experiences. Great care is necessary to do no harm and to not cause the patient even more shame on top of what they've already experienced. Sometimes the relationship with a the therapist is the only relationship where the patient has ever felt validated, respected, nurtured, or affirmed. The care and compassion can be misinterpreted as romantic love and sexual attraction for the therapist might evolve. In sex therapy, the ease with which therapists talk about sexual scenarios and validate the client's sexual thoughts and desires might be perceived as sexual interest in the patient. If a patient expresses romantic or sexual feelings for the therapist, many therapists are inclined to terminate the patient immediately because they want to avoid navigating this awkward scenario with the patient. You've heard me complain many times that therapists in general are not trained in sexology, so they might not know how to help the patient process and understand these feelings. A sex therapist specifically might be less reactive and more comfortable helping the patient move through those thoughts or feelings while maintaining professional boundaries during the course of treatment. Most therapists try to be a blank slate, not sharing too much personal information with their patients. Sharing personal information is sometimes helpful toward building rapport. Sometimes it's necessary to share personal information with the patient for purposes of transparency and full disclosure. Ethical codes caution therapists to only share personal information if doing so benefits the patient. Generally, oversharing personal information is not helpful for the patient and can even diminish the benefit they receive from treatment. We all have criteria that we use for selecting a healthcare provider. The more frequently we see them, the more rigid the criteria becomes. Some people simply want to see someone who's in their insurance network or who can schedule them at their preferred time. Others will be more selective, choosing a provider based on more personal qualities such as race, gender, age, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, and also personal appearance. Humans use some of these same criteria to quickly determine who is trustworthy and who isn't. Since working with a therapist is more deeply personal than getting your teeth cleaned, trust is a key factor in the selection process for most patients. Transference occurs in therapy when the patient redirects their feelings about someone else onto the therapist. These feelings can be positive or negative and sometimes even romantic. Therapists try to use the transference to the patient's advantage to build rapport and trust or to help the patient resolve the negative feelings they have for someone else. It's important for therapists to stay mindful of the patient's gender, sexual orientation, and cultural background as this can play a factor in how to interact with the patient to minimize actual or perceived boundary violations. 
Therapists have to take this into consideration before accepting a hug from a patient or, in some cases, even a handshake. Many therapists today prefer virtual sessions only because it minimizes the potential for accusations of boundary violations. Even in medicine, physicians and nurses are less hands-on than I remember them being earlier in my life. Sometimes new patients confuse sex therapy with sex surrogacy. This is rare, but it does occur, and this can often be clarified in the initial call or consultation. If you think you're falling in love with your therapist, here are some things I recommend. Number one, remember that your therapist is someone you hired for a specific service. Utilize them for the service you hired them for and nothing else. A therapist should never make sexual advances toward you or try to develop a friendship with you. Therapists should never ask to borrow money from you or catch a ride home from the office. While therapist and patient characters often hook up in movies or novels, this should never happen in real life. Number two, tell your therapist that you are developing a romantic attraction if you find that it's interfering with your treatment. Sexual attraction to others is normal. Everywhere you go in life, you likely meet people that you find attractive. Most of the time, we're able to manage this without acting on the desire or attraction. Simply finding your therapist pretty or handsome is not problematic if it doesn't get in the way of you getting the help that you need. Yes, therapists can also find their patients attractive, and we also need to manage this and terminate the patient if we don't trust ourselves to maintain professional boundaries. Number three. If you tell the therapist that you are attracted to them and they terminate you as a patient, don't take this personally. For some therapists, it is their policy in place to help them stay professional and ethical, and that is a good thing. If the therapist doesn't terminate you, you will likely get a reminder about professional boundaries as well as a discussion about the status of the treatment relationship. Some therapists are comfortable navigating this and even using it to therapeutically help the patient move through the attraction and understand how and why it occurred. Number four, remember that your therapist is also a human being with their own faults, quirks, baggage, and personal challenges. You only see them one-dimensionally as someone who has helped you, and that is why you hired them. The relationship with your therapist is not an equitable relationship. It never can be, and it never should be. In rare circumstances, a therapist and patient might know each other in another capacity. Not romantic, because we all share the same world. These situations occur organically, and therapists have to stay mindful of their history as your therapist when they run into you at parties, in the supermarket, or get seated next to you on an airplane. Dual relationships are not always avoidable, but they need to be minimized and managed cautiously. Number five, stay respectful of your therapist's personal life. You are entitled to know anything you want to know about them professionally, but avoid personal questions that are not relevant to your health. I understand the curiosity, and often people are only trying to be social and respectful with their inquiries, but remember your own role in keeping the relationship at a professional level. Number six, lastly, keep your therapist informed about how you are experiencing the treatment relationship. Your therapist might be very intuitive, but they can't read your mind about everything. If anything about the treatment relationship makes you uncomfortable, bring that to the therapist's attention immediately and give them an opportunity to resolve it. Sometimes the therapist is simply not the right fit for the patient's needs. If you have given them opportunity to address your concern and it still isn't comfortable, switching to another therapist is a reasonable solution. I'm Dr. Stephen Davidson, the Sexual Integrity Coach. I hope you will like this video and subscribe to this channel. Please check out my website at sexualintegritycoach.com. There you'll find information about the coaching services that I provide. You'll also get links to both of my books, Peaceful Mind, Peaceful Life, The Guidebook to Happiness, as well as Sexual Integrity, Finding the Courage to Be Yourself.